I see that Danish people, Danish farmers are really united. They are very nice working in groups. So this is a good example that we can bring home and we can promote community participation uh, uh, try to uh, make sure that people join together resources, time, knowledge, skills to make change in the society. Uh, how farmers overcome challenges they have because most farmers in Denmark they learn all the times, they improve themselves, they share experience and they change it. So this is they they really rely they believe themselves and they try to uh, overcome the challenges they have with the own resources experience they have uh, as the result of um, this course i have learned many many issues but there are three major issues um, maybe it is um, is the topic of using SAFA, SAFA tool. SAFA tool, I think it is very, very helpful in our organization management. And then another thing is um, how, how the farmer organizations are linking with your market. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the third thing is uh, the importance of organic farming. I think these three things are very, very important in this course because the importance of organic farming also uh, indicates um, how we can keep good environment. Uh, the real example is um, the topic of uh, agroforestry, the importance of agroforest uh, because our facilitator uh, used an approach, a participatory approach which um, we as participants we mentioned the importance of having tree mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, how, how uh, we can use these trees and uh, the future the future plan of um, getting the natural environment. That is the good thing. In Denmark here, we had a, a story that they cleared all the natural vegetations and if they end up with a disaster. Mm. So they organize themselves and they make some strategy of, um, of making sure that the natural vegetation is available by planting trees and taking care of environment. This is a very, very good example. Right. This SAFA tool, I said that it is very, very important um, to apply in your organization because uh, what is needed is um, sustainable, organization with a transparent system of management. Once you, 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 you use SAFA or uh, you, you apply SAFA, it means you, you need sustainable, sustainability of assessment of food in your agriculture. Yes, SAFA is very useful too to access sustainability of food and agriculture and to, uh, to examine our performance in our organization, in our company, how much we contributed to sustainability of food and agriculture. Because SAFA to look into four dimensions. One is economic, second is governance, third is sustainability, and, and the fourth is social. Certification and, and um, sustainable agriculture there is a good uh, connection because um, certification 
can uh, can provide a room for farmers to have a proper market because um, once their products are satisfied they can be um, sold in a global a global um, in a global market mm -hmm. but if certification is not taken place uh, for the farmers who do not have proper markets and also certification is um, very very useful to farmers because um, the way of uh, applying organic farming also it makes the agriculture to be sustainable because we have to take care of the soil uh, soil content and other issues that is in short sure um, certification process is very uh, important and it linked to um, sustainable agriculture what I get from the course is first we understand about what is the process uh, look like we understand about certifications seems uh, in Denmark, uh, certification seems internationally in Europe, mm. certification seems in the United States, so different places. So all participants understand uh, how it's different shape from one country to one country based on the international standard. And the, in addition to that, um, we, we noticed that for small scale holders, farmers, it is difficult to to have certification because certification needs money. Yeah, exactly. We also had discussion about a farmer who also produces organic vegetable, but he does not want the certifications. And a farmer who want a certification to 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 have his produce certified. So the reason is one to improve. His marketing because if his produce certified, he can trade his produce internationally, and many people know him. But if he does not have certification or his produce is not certified, he cannot uh, sell his produce internationally. Maybe only in a small village. So certification is important for marketing to prove your performance that you really meet the international standard. Yeah, so in order to assist the small-scale farmers, uh, in order to, to get certification, we have learned that um, uh, linking this group of farmers with other development stakeholders who are focusing on agriculture is very, very important. And also what is needed there is contract to be uh, to be um, available because otherwise it will be difficult for the farmers uh, to produce uh, the, the agricultural products in a good standard. So uh, certification also um, is taking place where good quality standard is available. So we have to, to to train our farmers to produce mm. these um, crops in a good standard. The importance of uh, agroforestry, we saw that um, once, once you grow uh, crops with the different trees, there are some advantages. For example, uh, among of the advantages um, getting uh, humus, some of the, the trees can produce leaves which can add soil fertility. And um, also it is the way of uh, having nitrogen fixer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also it provides shading. And uh, sometimes it is very important in weed control. I think even other uh, things my colleague here can add 
importance of agroforest? Um, agroforest is important for organic farming because agroforest is a method to uh, balance between uh, environment of uh, water, lands, and air pollution. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like intercropping? Inter yeah. Is that? So, I did not make it go well. Yeah. Yeah. Is it related for yes. crop intercropping? Uh, intercropping and also crop rotation. Crop, crop rotation. Yeah. And in, in our yeah. area, because uh, let's see, you said before the landscape, there are soil erosions. So, by using this um, agroforest and Maybe, sometimes yeah. uh, crop rotation and um, intercropping also. Yeah. It can assist to reduce this um, soil erosion. Soil yeah. The only thing which I uh, was very, very interested is that um, when we talk about water and we talk about um, salt, yeah, I didn't know before, but through this training, I think now we have learned something that um, Salt always follows water. Um, so once we we introduce irrigation canals, we have to to be sure that um, salt also will come up to that canal. And once the salt is um, covering um, yeah. covering uh, the slopes, uh, the slopes the bottom. Yeah. After canal. So th there will be something else which can happen, which is not useful for our crops. In, in this course on sustainable agriculture, one of the resource person brought us um, an, a knowledge about Fabo Business School mm -hmm. that is really linked with what we are doing in Cambodia and Tanzania. Mm -hmm. on farmer field school, mm -hmm. promoting farmers, mm -hmm. gather them together, and we learn together, we work together, mm -hmm. we practice it, we observe. Yeah. So it's it's a good method. Yeah. So the training course also talk about that. Yeah, exactly. It was not a very new um, concept, but for others, they were... Participants. Yeah, yeah. For other participants, they were asking so many questions. Mm -hmm. How these things can be applied. Mm -hmm. Some of our um, guys, like uh, Richard from Kenya, the one we saw here, he said that uh, maybe he will find time so that he can know how to conduct a farmer field school. And uh, two ladies from Kenya also, Lily and B, they told me that maybe they can invite me in Kenya and see how they can use this approach of conducting farmer food school because for them it is difficult to mobilize farmers groups and uh, for this other approach I think we Tanzania and Cambodia we have managed to mobilize farmers groups so it is a good idea that um, uh, we are here around uh, 11 countries so only two countries we are using the farmer food school so, we said thank you, we appreciate the other. <laughs> Otherwise, even for us, it was difficult to understand. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, to get more knowledge and experience from the resource person, uh, to improve existing experience and knowledge we have that we, we already did in our hometown, yeah. Yeah. and also to get knowledge from other participants. Yeah. So, I hope that yeah. going back to our country to start promoting Farmer Business School, Farmer Fair School will be successful. <laughs> For us it is a very big advantage because um, the groups are there. So it is the way of um, changing attitude to them to be closer with these additional skills which we are getting in this course. Um, in a course we also have other participants from Asia. We have two from Nepal, mm -hmm. one from Pakistan, one from Afghanistan, and one from Myanmar. Uh, 
In this course also we have um, some participants from the government. But uh, most of them, they confuse that in farmer field school maybe it is like demonstration plots. That's why most of them, they are saying that it is difficult you know, yeah. eh, to mobilize uh, farmers so that they can learn <laughs> and uh, finally they can form um, an entrepreneur group. So they are getting difficulties in um, differentiating farmer food school and demo plots. This is happening in most mm. cases. They work for extensions office of the Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah. They work mm -hmm. for the Department yeah. of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. So, so those people also learn from us from the course. Yes. So experience while we share to them. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also the, the concept of a public private partnership. It seems that it is very low in the other areas. And that's why the, in some countries where um, they are using um, public private partnership, things are moving very fast. The indicator is other, other project where it is working because all, all topics, all mm -hmm. topics are very relevant mm -hmm. to our work in our area. Yeah. yeah. Others, they think that it is difficult yeah. Yeah, to introduce these um, topics because it will take time, but for us, we have already. Mm -hmm. So from the Dalida Fellowship course in Sustainable Agriculture, we do not only learning from the resources person and excursion activity we went through to many companies, farmers, mm -hmm. but we also learn from other participants. Yeah. Like we have 11 yeah. countries, yeah. 20 participants from 11 countries. Yeah. And those people are from NGO sector, yeah. private sector, uh, government. Mm -hmm. So we, we are... Mm -hmm. Uh, have different experiences, knowledge, and we share among uh, all of us. Um, through the areas which we visited, um, as a learning tool, I think I have um, experienced three issues which I will start with. The first issue is um, about introducing a training center because uh, when we went to the municipality we saw a social training center where they are training um, language and um, international language and other issues for those youth and the other people who didn't attend school and also um. they are involving them they are involving them in agricultural issues. That was kind of the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So this is um, is is very useful also in our country. I was comparing myself because we have NADO organization and we have um, facilitators. So what we are doing is um, to train farmers about agriculture, but um, my vision is uh, to have um, an adult training center so that people can come and learn and also they can pay. But here we saw that they are not paying. The government is paying for them. But for us, for sustainability of NADO, maybe we can introduce this so that they can pay a little fee. Mm -hmm. This is the first thing. And um, the second thing is about um, adding soil fertility. Because I've seen here uh, many farmers, they have a bigger plot of producing um, grasses, which they use to make is hay and they make for compost manure. So I was asking with um, I was asking the agricultural officer in Dodoma. He said that there is um, a certain department, a 
to the Ministry of Agriculture in Tanzania where I can get such seeds of grasses. So this is the thing which I will work on it so that um, organic farming will take place easily than uh, making compost manure using um, yard farm manure because not all farmers, they have cows and other things. And uh, the third thing is uh, on empowering farmers themselves so that they can not depend on government. I have learned here that all farmers, um, they have uh, their own federations which, uh, which have representatives so that they share all the issues themselves yes, and yes. then even the resources they are sharing. Mm -hmm. So these are the major three issues which I think for start, I can yeah. start with. So uh, similar to John's, yeah. what I have learned from the excursions to many places from the course, um, one is the methods to improve soil fertility. Because in Denmark, you have different soil patterns, not always good soil. Some places mm -hmm. also sending mm -hmm. soils. So I have learned how farmers overcome all challenges to improve soil fertility for organic farming. And uh, most farmers really take care about environment. So improving soil fertility by using organic matter, and they also take care of uh, a tree nearby the farm, and they really manage so well in terms of water, uh, uh, fertilizer, and resources they have. And I also learned about uh, uh, they have really good plan, like production plan. They know about the demand in the market, and then they produce the certain amounts that they can supply to the, the market, which is different from my country, that farmers just produce it. They don't know that how much they can sell, who will buy it. So that's a problem. That sometimes we have less produce for the market, sometimes we have surplus of produce for selling on the market and the price is very low. But here, the farmers, they have their own production plant, they are very well organized, they have um, proper techniques and skills to do what they are doing. So this is very important. The main challenge which uh, I will have is about, uh, is on um, changing attitude to people. Because agriculture, is the activity which has been um, introduced earlier to people. But the way of uh, doing farming is different. Especially most of them, they believe that uh, they have to use industrial fertilizer in order to increase crop productivity. But uh, the importance of organic farming is for good health to them and also to have a proper market and also to avoid um, the use of GMOs and so on. Because in our country we have some uh, government representative. I don't know what happened with Monsanto. They are promoting GMOs. So we have a conflict with NADO when we start introducing this organic farming. But uh, how to, to overcome this challenge is uh, to promote organic farming. Once we promote organic farming, it means that uh, we, are, we are destroying GMO, the use of GMO. This will be the first challenge. And then, um, the second challenge is about uh, political win because we will have an uh, election this year around October. So once you introduce anything new which is not popular to decision makers, they think that maybe you want to promote someone else for election. So this is very important. Mm. 
you have to consider. And the third issue is about um, the, the, the facing out of the, the, the other project. Because here we have uh, received very, very innovative skills and uh, very, very important for sustainable agriculture. But we have only a few months, then other will face out. Now, how to implement this? It needs support. So, um, although the solution is to find even other donor or other development stakeholders, but it will take time. So, the skills will stop in the files and in my head, how to implement it, how to collaborate with my colleagues, it will take time. These three challenges, I think, for the earlier stage of implementing the skills which I have learned here, um, will take place. I have some challenges um, in Cambodia in terms of changing attitudes as well, because now we have destroyed natural resources and people do not consider and practice properly to promote sustainable agriculture. Uh, most farmers like using chemical fertilizer, you know, like producing their own compost or trying to balance between natural soils, water uh, for their farming. So it's a challenge for me that I am alone, I cannot make change, so it takes me time. Another challenge is, is how I can uh, expand my knowledge and skills, what I have learned from here, reaching to most of people. So that, that's heavy because many, many uh, Cambodian people uh, need to be uh, trained uh, about sustainable agriculture. Yeah. Um, about a um, NADO action plan after this training, I have um, um, documented to my master trainer uh, the first part is an introduction of a NADO organization explaining how uh, was um, formed and explaining how we have expanded the working area and um, come up with um, objectives. And the first main objective I have put that um, I want to have sustainable organization with transparency and um, with a transparent system of management. This is because uh, we have uh, 65 uh, facilitators and also 15 uh, staff. So for me as a director to manage and justify the work and the plans which we have agreed, it was difficult. So the immediate objective I have um, put is um, to revise and improve job descriptions, even organization manuals, so that um, delegation of power, once it is taking place, it will assist me to know the rules of the head of departments, and also the rules of other staffs and the system of reporting, also monitoring and so on. So uh, the main activities which I have uh, put in my action plan is uh, to make sure that um, we will have um, a participatory quarterly and weekly plans so that we can use the matrix matrix model in order to minimize cost. Mm -hmm. And um, another activity which I have put is um, to develop a participatory 
monitoring and evaluation plan, which will result um, which will result to the head of departments or different departments to share knowledges and share responsibilities. As a, a director, I will identify I will identify the staffs which are they have a good vision and a good leadership style, so that um, once I'm not there, I can delegate power to them. And uh, another activity which I have uh, planned is to create linkages between these uh, departments. For this activity, I'm sure we'll come up with different proposals from each department because they have um, different capacities. So once um, I create this linkage, it is easier for them to share knowledge and so on. Uh, these are some of the activities which I have put in my plan and um, I am sure I will, finally I will provide motivation because we have been uh, providing motivation to staffs and also participants of um, Farmer Field School by uh, having um, internal visits and so on. But uh, I was thinking that I will provide rooms to other participants, facilitators and staffs to attend different functions where they can learn about marketing and the other issues. That's all. It's short. I have my action plan to implement at home, uh, especially in my organization. My overall objective is to promote sustainable agriculture in the projects that we are implementing. And the specific objective is to uh, set up a viable organic uh, business for vegetable producer and organic rice producer. So the activities are one, to provide training on sustainable agriculture to those farmers. Second, to provide training specifically on organic rice, organic vegetable, to the organic rice producer, to the organic vegetable producer. And thirdly, the third activity is to link those farmers to the private sector or private company, like certified company, company that certify organic farming to the farmer and link them to the, to the buyer, like hotel or company who buy organic rice, organic vegetable. Uh, these are the plans that I will do. Expected results that I want to get from the action plan are one, um, staff, government partner staff, CP, community professionals, and the farmers have enough knowledge to implement sustainable agriculture. And secondly, uh, organic rice, organic vegetable producers can produce uh, uh, rice and vegetable for the supplier, for the market. And the third result, they all have linked to the market and the producers have certified by accredited, accredited institutions. And the first activity is to uh, provide echo training, like continue providing training to the staff, the government staff from the Department of Agriculture, and CP in other project, community professional. They are, they are from the village, like the village uh, or agriculture promoter, something like that. So those will join with zero staff, with staff from the Department of Agriculture, CP, and I will offer two days training on sustainable agriculture to them. Yeah, for me, I have uh, said that we will use this uh, matrix model. Uh, this includes even suffer to 
because um, in Safatul we have um, governance, uh, economic, environment, and also social issue. So uh, our organization also have um, different departments. We have um, training department, we have uh, environment department, we have social department, and also we have marketing department, which is relevant to economic. So I was thinking that um, this SAFA tool will be applied when we will be developing these um, systems of monitoring and evaluation tools. I am sure by using this model, sustainable uh, agriculture will take place in Nano and the other areas where they are still asking us to go and work, but we are lacking support. <laughs> we are still um, having a dialogue with them that uh, once you need us, you have to take care of our, our staffs who will be coming there. So this is still on the table. How much they can contribute to us or to our staff so that they can be there. But uh, all in all, we have managed about uh, marketing to get some of the uh, financial institutions like CRDB Bank. They came to our area because they have seen that we have started with these farmer interest groups. Uh, they are investing them the money to our NADO circles. So, and uh, the, the the system is going very well. So they are interested in joining us with a, a certain program known as Fahari Huduma, where it can allow NADO circles to get a certain percent for the money which will be invested and um, the transaction of money. So we expect to have uh, sustainable um, input in our organization or source of income in our organization after two months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and also a very, very useful issue. Uh, we didn't know we as NADO and the other two uh, is when we create this um, farmer field school and the farmer interest groups. Um, according to the uh, Act, uh, Cooperative Act of uh, 2013, it shows that uh, once there are 20 to 30 people, it can be used as um, a primary cooperative society. So through the uh, international organization from Finland, when they came and uh, did a baseline survey, they saw NADO as an organization which is working uh, in partnership with other. We have already created these primary cooperative societies without knowing. So at the end of uh, <coughs> their baseline survey, they called me in Mbeya region where uh, the Minister of Agriculture he was there from Tanzania and the other uh, researchers from different institutes in Tanzania, even um, regional commissioners, they were there. Mm -hmm. They rewarded me um, a gift, a gift of uh, books which shows uh, primary cooperative societies and also which shows uh, federations in Finland and they promised me that uh, NADO will be used as a FOCO NGO in Tanzania for uh, assisting farmers group in a cooperative way. So this is also um, a result of our partnership with other. That's why we need more time uh, for other Mm -hmm. uh, to take care of us because now the fruits are coming mm -hmm. and uh, better to be all together with the other.
Sure. And the, um, some fruits also with you are all together with the other is about the vantage, vantage organic growers group. Also it is some of the results um, between uh, uh, between partnership with the other and Nago. So I'm still closing my finger, my fingers so that we can still uh, cooperate for a little yeah. bit and uh, then make some strategy how these things will be all together. Okay. Yeah. For me, I have um, a very, very special request. You know, uh, since I have come here and share experience with the other partner and so on, um, I think the, my special request is um, um, study tour between Cambodia and Tanzania. You know, it will be easy even uh, the other partner uh, to see what they are doing because we are just reading books, our, reports, yeah, and the reports, and uh, you know, seeing is believing sometimes, and also we can share some issues. Yeah, that's it.